Hello YouTubers, welcome back to another Tesla vlog with me, Adam Uninformed. So today, I'm going to take you on a small trip to my local Tesla supercharger. So I've only supercharged my car once in 5 months ownership, and that was on my actual delivery date. Since then, my nearest supercharger was Northampton, and that's well out of my way. Thankfully, Tesla are continuing to expand their charging network, and that means my new local one is only a few miles away from me at Leicester Foss Park. So I thought it'd be rude not to try it out and show you all how it went. But before I took the car to the supercharger, I also gave it a good clean and hoped that I didn't have the dirtiest Tesla on site. I will cover the basics and how to supercharge first before discussing the location and local amenities. The video is also broken down into sections so you can easily go back or switch to the section that you want the most. It's pretty neat if you want to convince your partner that your next electric car has to be a Tesla without having them watch the whole video, especially if they're only going to be interested in a certain section. So what are superchargers and how do you find them? One of the main real drivers of purchasing a Tesla over another manufacturer is the access to this Tesla supercharger network. It's exclusively available to all Tesla vehicles, so Tesla owners not only have one of the most efficient and longest range EVs on the market, we also have our own network of chargers just for us. This not only means less range anxiety and faster charging, it also allows for a flawless and painless experience when it comes to charging your Tesla. This is because Tesla can harmonize the software, billing and usability of the whole transaction to be easy and convenient as possible. Us owners can still use the wider public infrastructure chargers, but superchargers are just way more convenient and I'll go into detail about that a little later. So the supercharger visit is more than likely to be entirely planned as a vast majority of your charging will be from home if you're an everyday user. If you use the Tesla navigation to a destination beyond its remaining charge, it will calculate your estimated battery life for your trip and it will navigate you to a supercharger should you need to. Alternatively, you can just search for a charger directly like I do as I'm on like 28%. On screen, there are three categories of chargers, one bolt, two bolt, three bolts. These are simulating the speed of the charging with one being the slowest around 7 kilowatt, the same as a home charging unit with some 22 kilowatt chargers. Two bolts meaning 50 kilowatt chargers and finally three bolt chargers are mainly Tesla superchargers. These vary from 150 kilowatt to 250 kilowatt. 150 kilowatt chargers are V2 Tesla chargers and the 250 kilowatt chargers are the new version 3 superchargers from Tesla and these are now the standard when they open up a new location such as the Leicester superchargers. This isn't to be confused with level 2 and level 3 charging as these are universal terminology to categorize a charger via speed. So I believe anything from 7 kilowatt to 22 kilowatt is level 2, anything more is level 3. So are there other ways to find chargers around the UK? Thankfully yes, there is an ever expanding network of EV chargers, some chargers more hidden than others but there are some great apps you should know about in order to find them. So the first one is the official Tesla app. Uh, you can instantly click on the charging tab and it already locates the nearest supercharger to you together with the stall availability. The second one is a better route planner. And now I've talked about this app before on my SR Plus vs long range comparison and I would use this to plan out a long trip on my phone before using the Tesla navigation just because it's convenient when you're on your phone and I believe it has waypoints too. Zapmap, so this is my go-to app for just finding a charger local to me. You can either filter it by free charges if you wanted to, which I love to utilize when going to a new destination to see if I can get parking cheaper or offset some of that parking costs via the added energy. The last one is PodPoint. So I have this for two reasons. One being it's my home charger, but two, they also have a vast public network in the UK. You can see all the public charging points via the app. Some are free and some cost to charge, but I've noticed there are situated in supermarkets a lot of the time and their seven kilowatt charges tend to be free only point you need to know is your charge is capped at 15 minutes unless you confirm your charge via the app hence why i use the app pretty often and more so than just for a home charger there are probably more apps similar to pop point in their setup but these are just the most popular of its kind near to me one more point when finding charges in your location is that your charge port may not be compatible with your location. Here in the UK our Model 3s are CSS compatible which is probably the most popular charging port around but the Model X and S 
originally had Chalamo. So just be wary when picking a charge on the location just because of its connectors on site. Once you have selected your charging destination, you can set off the drive. And one of the first things you'll notice here is my Tesla Model 3 has decided to precondition the battery. Now on a longer trip, this would happen as you get closer to the charger and not from where you set off, like in my situation. Preconditioning the battery is effectively putting the battery in an optimum position to accept the fastest charging speed. Now, there are a number of different factors that could affect your charging speed, but one of the biggest is your battery temperature. Ideally, the battery needs to be nice and warm, which is where the preconditioning comes into play. The car will effectively generate heat for the battery to get it into that sweet spot. If you were a bit nervous on your state of charge before reaching a charging destination, then you can actually cancel the preconditioning but what you'll be doing is sacrificing the charging speed at the stall. So before I delve deeper, please remember to support my channel by hitting the like, subscribe button, and the notification bell. Such a quick gesture really helps me out if you enjoy Tesla content. I'm so close to 500 subs, or I may have even just passed it by now. So a huge thank you to all my subs. I really can't do this without all your support, so thank you. So how do you access this supercharger in Leicester? My supercharger destination is at a big retail park, right at the front. When you access a supercharger, sometimes there are restrictions, but these are displayed on the navigation when selecting the charger. These can be time restrictions or checking in with a hotel reception, for example. Anyway, what caught me off guard was you need to follow the one-way system here. You just need to follow it left, and then you can park up um, once you've followed that one-way system. When you go to park, there is this bumper located on the floor. Not only is this here as a protectionary deterrent from an excessive reverse maneuver, cool, that was a bit of a mouthful, it's also there as an indication where you need to be in order for the lead to reach your car charge port. So back right up until you're right against it, don't be shy, then all you need to do is pick up the charger from the stall and plug it in. It's literally plug and play, just don't do what I did and not put it in far enough. I was always thinking to myself, why is this not charging? And I was just too soft putting it in. I just needed to ram it in a bit more. Shame me, really. Another point I need to mention is parking etiquette for V2 superchargers. This being applicable to the 150 kilowatt Tesla superchargers. So when the power is being pushed to the car, this is actually shared between two different Tesla stalls. So unless you leave a gap between each Tesla where possible, obviously if it's busy, you just don't have that luxury, but where possible, don't park right next to the nearest Tesla. So try follow the formation of car, space, car, space, etc, etc. For V3 superchargers like this one, this doesn't really matter so much. So not only is it a faster charger, you don't have to worry about sharing the power either. So how do you connect and make the payment? So once it starts, one of the best reasons apart from having such a vast network of exclusive chargers is the plug and play experience. No payment details to input, no scanning cards or external leads, plug and play to the point where there's less interaction than putting fuel into your gas petrol diesel vehicle. If you're wondering how other networks can perform, just take a look at industry expert Sandy Munro trying to charge an ID4. It's really an eye opener for how a seamless plug and play experience can be overlooked. For payment, Tesla take the payment from the card connected to your Tesla account when you purchase your car. If you're fortunate, you will have free miles on your Tesla account like me. You get free miles from purchasing a Tesla using a referral link like the one in the, my description, or by someone else using your referral link to purchase a Tesla. This is effectively free energy or travel, which I use exclusively for long trips. In my eyes, it's free fuel, like you'll never be in a similar situation in a combustion car. So how fast is it to charge and how much does it actually cost? So if you don't use a referral link to get 1,000 free miles, or you've used your allocation already, then your supercharger costs will display in the bottom right of your charging screen in your car. If you have three miles, it may show the charge at first, but don't worry, it, it won't take it from your three miles in the end. If I had to pay for this session of 28 kilowatts per hour, which I found on my Tesla account later on, the cost per kilowatt is 26 pence for this stall. So it would have totaled £7.28, which is nothing for roughly 53% charge. Fees do vary per stall again, so you will be told the cost per kilowatt in the navigation. To work it out, you just times the energy used by the cost per kilowatt hour. So nice and straightforward, really. There's also idle fees charge if you don't move your car within five minutes of the char charging complete notification. Now that notification gets sent directly to your smartphone and you have five minutes from receiving that before those fees will then get implemented. And I think it's roughly one pound a minute, but again, it will show you in the navigation. Charging speed at a supercharger is an interesting point to cover, really. So here is some of my charging rates that I'm getting 
whilst charging. You can see I'm not getting the full 250 kilowatts, and that's okay. There's no need to get angry for not getting the fastest speed consistently, as there's a valid reason as to why that is. So I mentioned before that temperature has a big effect on this, but also how low your state of charge actually is. To get the full 250 kilowatts, you need to be in the right window of temperature, etc. You just have to be in the pure, perfect conditions and probably in a low state of charge. You may find it will start slow and then ramp up its speed and slowly trickle back down again. And that's because the battery would not sustain a consistent deployment of a full 250 kilowatt charge and could actually cause unnecessary damage to the battery cells. So the software takes care of all of this for you though. So it's a fine art of a quick session and protects in the battery pack. The most important speed isn't the energy deployed, but the time it takes to complete. And does it fit within your time schedule? Even with me getting slower speeds, this took me about 25 minutes in total, which may seem long until you use that 25 minutes more productively. So what can I do whilst charging? Well, there's a number of different things like watch Netflix, YouTube, gaming, even watch Twitch in hope of upping my Warzone game. This will burn down the time in no time. And yes, I said use the time more productively, but that's fun for me. You could do some work during this time, but who wants to do that? Unless you're charging during work hours, which is probably best you don't do the fun stuff just listed, unless you can multitask and like me. I, for one, am not working whilst charging, but I do want to show you around my surrounding area in Foss Park. So let's go take a walk. So this charger is located at a fairly big retail park of Foss Park, located just off the motorway, the M1. It's easy and convenient to get to. Location-wise, you just probably want to consider that traffic getting into Foss Park can get a little crazy, especially during Christmas time. Also, this charger is only available during the hours of 6am to 12am and it's not a pure 24-7 charger. So I've actually attended this charger on a Sunday outside the shop's closing times to just ensure that it wasn't too busy during filming. But I did manage to get some footage of the newer part of Foss Park during my earlier visit to Foss Park. There is now a next flagship store here with their clothes and home products integrated all into one store with water stones and a Costa coffee shop all under one roof. There is also a H&M and Clark's open at the moment with a flannels game Evan cycle due to open soon and more unannounced shops to follow. We also have the food court to grab a bite, and I even tried to grab a coffee whilst filming, but because it was out of hours, it wasn't open at the time. A big I told you so about this location is if you have kids, do not let them near this water fountain. Chances are they'll need a spare set of clothes as the temptation to touch it is probably just a bit too much for them. So either just avoid and distract or take a spare set of clothes. Don't say I didn't warn you here. In addition to the food court, which still has a lot of unannounced tenants at present. We have a McDonald's, an M&S, Primark, Asda, plus many more shops that I'll show you on the screen now. Basically, there's a good range of shops available and there'll be a wide range of eateries if you're hungry. So when it comes to location, you've basically got every facility you probably need right here, plus parking is free after you've charged. We also have some level two chargers here, pod point, seven kilowatt chargers, if you wanted to know. And these aren't ever chargers, so we need your cables to use these ones. Conclusions. So I need to split this into two parts. One about supercharging and the other how the location is. Supercharging should be and is convenient. The whole experience from locating to plugging the charger in to the building site is just a seamless and convenient. Especially after watching Sandy Monroe's struggle with Electrify America Charger and his ID4. Please consider I've never tested any other brand apart from Pod.7 kilowatt chargers, but they're free, so I'm not really counting them. But here in the UK, some chargers take card payment on site, others you need to download a special app or have a special card. It just doesn't sound as convenient and then seamless as the Tesla experience, though it still holds an important place in the infrastructure. And I'm sure I'll get to experience another charging brand at some point though, and I probably won't enjoy the payment part. But that's to be expected. Nothing is free unless you have free Tesla supercharger miles. On the location side, it's really spot on. But by the time you've used the loo, grabbed the coffee, chances are your charging is complete. And if not, it's well on its way. Once it's done, there's loads to do here. Probably just missing a toy store, but one may pop up after I post this video as there's quite a few spare units available still. That's it. Now you've been informed. Let me know what your thoughts are on this video. Would you charge here if you could? Don't forget to support my channel by hitting the like, subscribe and sharing the video with your friends and family. I really enjoy doing these Tesla vlogs and the support is always hugely welcomed. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.